You know, um, it is with great excitement that we get an opportunity this morning to be together to give you guys uh, great fellowship, but also uh, to be able to give worship and praise to our God. This uh, is a graduation service, and, you know, for so many of our graduates, uh, I just want to extend the greatest uh, of congratulations to you guys. Uh, you have worked super, super hard, and as a result of all of your labor, uh, we get an opportunity this uh, morning to be able to celebrate you, uh, to be able to honor you. Uh, I know that for myself, whenever I think about people who have pushed themselves to get to graduation, whether it's high school or college, uh, it's a great accomplishment. And it is definitely worthy of, uh, of praise, it's worthy of acknowledgement and uh, as was shared earlier, uh, I'm so grateful that as a church we make, we make time to do this every year. Uh, and we, we really do this because we want to make sure that all of the graduates uh, know how special it is to us for the work and the labor that you guys have done. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, to those who rejoice, let us all rejoice. Uh, I'm super, super encouraged this morning. There's, uh, we have lots of activities that are going on, uh, and I don't want my part to kind of drag, uh, but I do want to just share uh, uh, two things here as we get into the message. One was a great uh, a, a thankfulness to the graduates. The other uh, was in regards to uh, this lesson that we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about Fast, Pray, Act. Uh, that's the title of the message uh, this morning. Uh, before we get into that, I, I did want to acknowledge one thing. This Wednesday, for those who uh, may not have been aware, we launched our social media uh, for the church uh, and I'm super grateful for all the women who were involved uh, in, in helping to rebrand and helping uh, to start our Facebook, our Ford Facebook, our new Instagram, our new website. Uh, all of these things were tools that we want to use first to communicate with one another, but especially to be able to communicate with our friends, with our families and our relatives and everyone who is outside of our, our faith community. We want you to know who we are. And um, one of the things that uh, we've done with our branding is we chose an emblem that would remind everyone of who we are. Uh, and it, this is, uh, this is our, a part of our new brand, uh, and this is actually a rose window. Rose, uh, rose windows uh, is a kind of a gothic uh, structure that was created really back in the Middle Ages uh, as a way not only of bringing light into a, a dark building, uh, but as a way of being able to give uh, praise. It, it actually represents something. Uh, and our particular uh, rose window, what it, what it represents is so many parts coming together as one, which I believe is super true about our church. Whether people are old or young, whether people are black, white, Asian, or whatever, no matter what a person's background is, what a person's financial uh, uh, impact has been, marital status, education. We are many parts, but we come together as one. And in the very center of that, the thing that, that links us all together uh, is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, linked together in three circles. Uh, and it's super encouraging that this is something that's a part of our building, uh, but we want to make it a part of our brand, of who we are. Multiple peoples coming together to give honor and praise to God. It is so emblematic of who we are as a church community, uh, but also we want to share that with others uh, as we go out uh, into the world. You know, I wanted, to be, I wanted to share with you guys just some great news, I think, that has been going on really all around uh, our, our, our faith community, uh, and it really goes into the issue of what's been starts, what's been in our nation. We know that during this time uh, of pandemic, during this time of financial uh, financial distress, uh, as well as social unrest uh, sparked by violence, uh, God's people have been at work, and and I want to make sure that all of us know that God's people have been at work. We're not, we haven't just been sitting down watching. And I'm here grateful to uh, share with you guys that it's been super encouraging the conversations that myself uh, and that Shan uh, have been a part of during this time. Not only from members in our church, but members from other churches, uh, as everyone has been fighting just to either understand or to express how they feel during this time. Whether it's, you know, man, can we all just meet together right now uh, and not let the pandemic control us? Whether it's, how can we... Uh, band together and help one another during this fine time of financial distress. It's one of the reasons why I cut off all my hair, to be able to support our brothers and sisters uh, in India and in Africa and in South America so that they could, be, uh, they could, uh, they could uh, have money to uh, have food. 
But all the conversations, especially around uh, race and, and around the challenges that our, that our nation is facing, we are in our 12th or 13th day of protests all around our nation, has, has, definitely, has definitely grabbed the attention of the world. Uh, but for those of us who are part of Christ Jesus, this is not a new discussion. Uh, this is something that we have been fighting and battling with for a long time. And I wanted to read a letter that was written to us by our brothers and sisters from the church in Columbus because they've heard about the situations that we've had here locally uh, first uh, with Brianna Taylor uh, and then again uh, with another gentleman that was uh, killed. And this is what the letter says. It says, Dear Louisville Church, the Columbus Church sends this letter with a very heavy heart about what's happening in our great country in specific places like Louisville. These recent days have been some of the most difficult times and I believe we have faced as a church. We've all experienced some tough times in our lives during our years on this earth, but I think that these are some of the most discouraging days that we face today. There are millions of people out of work with the coronavirus still a real concern. Many lives have been lost even to the virus and and many more are struggling uh, with the disease. Most recently, we've seen our country uh, be divided like nothing we've seen in our lifetime. There's anger, outrage, which has led to violence, lawlessness, and raging in our cities. The background of all of this is the senseless killing of George Floyd, who who died crying, I can't breathe. While people stood and watched, as well as the death of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, we know that there are many that this is not, to many, this is not a one-time event. But these senseless acts have moved the hearts of all Americans, and especially the hearts of the disciples, They have also led to more unrest as peaceful protests have been hijacked uh, by by looting and by arson. This has led to more innocent people being affected who have nothing to do uh, with the situation. Uh, And if there were ever a time of prayer and fasting for our country, this is it. Racism and injustice are wrong, and this is a time for us to stand together. As a church, we may not be able to change the world as it is full of flawed humans who are sinful, but we can do our part and do our best and pray constantly for God to move the hearts of men. However, we do have the power to change the church, change our minds, and change ourselves, to offer hope and comfort to one another, to minister to the needs of those who are hurting, to the people of color in our churches who have experienced in stories uh, that, all, that all may never understand or be able, even able to relate to. We have the opportunity to learn through their eyes from their experiences and to educate ourselves and listen and to care. And we are, we are willing to have hard talks and to invite them and to be humble and to sit at the table with each other and to be with each other, to recognize our own biases and flawed beliefs about each other. We are family and we should be able to talk about anything, to show up and to be active participants in change. The time is now to give grace and to show mercy, to receive grace and accept mercy and to go deeper and therefore love deeper than ever before. The need of the hour is love and forgiveness. Jesus died for all of us once and for all, through Christ, we are all equal and in, equal, in, in equal need of his forgiveness. Let us remember that this world is not our home. We are living for eternity. And may God be glorified, and may some light come from this time of darkness. Then he writes, they wrote a scripture for us as well. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we may comfort those with Uh, in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Just for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you a patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. Our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We want you to know, Louisville Church of Christ, that we are praying With you, we are praying for you, and in our pain, and even in our sin, God loves us and has always provided comfort and mercy. We believe he has done this not just for us, so we provide the same comfort and mercy to to a lost and hurting world. Your brothers and sisters here in Columbus want you to know we're thinking of you, we're praying for you, we love you deeply, and we also pray that God will be glorified through this difficult time. In his love, the Columbus Church of Christ. And so I just wanted to read that. Um, because I just thought it's, it's important to know that even as we deal with our own things here locally, uh, that we are not alone, that we are part of a great church family. Uh, the Columbus Church wasn't the only church uh, that we and Shannon have been in contact with, uh, but people have been asking, you know, how are things going? You know, they've seen us in the news and they've seen the things that have been happening here in our city. One of the things that's been really encouraging that I really wanted to share here today and kind of focus on here as we, for the rest of our time, is that 
all the churches in the ACR, which is, which is the family of churches that we're part of, the churches in Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and obviously here uh, in, in Kentucky, have all made a decision to take the next 25 days for, the next, for all 25 of our churches to, spend, to sp- select a specific day to pray and to be fasting for our nation's un- unrest, but also that this could be a time that we as churches can band together and be more unified than ever before. So I'll read uh, again what was written by our brother uh, Ed Anton, who actually oversees and leads the ACR region, which is what we're called American Commonwealth region. He says, this moment calls for us to be Jesus' church of hope in a world full of injustice, pregnant uh, prejudice, pain, despair, disease, and sin. We, the churches of the American Commonwealth region, have the same love, being one in spirit and, one of, and of one mind, and are called to strive as one to spread the disruptive uh, yet healing message of the kingdom to our cities. At the very moment that, they, that we need to embrace one another more closely and reach out into our cities more broadly, we face unprecedented restrictions imposed by a pandemic. And so we go to our, we go to our God together. The 25 churches of the ACR will fast and pray and strive as one for the next 25 days, guided by God's word in Isaiah 58, uh, verse 6 through 8. The Great Philadelphia Church launches our fast, uh, or more accurately, fast, pray, act, uh, based on Isaiah 58 on Monday, which is tomorrow, June 8th. And the Capitol Rivers Church, uh, formerly uh, known as Montgomery County Church, will anchor our efforts on Thursday, July 2nd. As each church passes the baton to the next, uh, there will be hour of overlapping video and chat to connect with each church. And we pray that our churches will, although we face unique challenges and for greater unity, empathy, humility, and encouragement, please pray for our fellowship and for our cities, and please guide your church towards a fast of God's choosing. Uh, and please let us uh, announce this effort in our churches this Sunday. So I just wanted to share that with all of you guys, uh, because there are, there's always a segment of our fellowship that might feel like, oh, is this going to be kind of a flash in the pan? We talk about it once and we move on. Uh, there's maybe another segment that feels like, why are we talking about this so much? Uh, I think it's great that we can all come together, though, uh, in solidarity as, as we uh, work and as we pray and as we fight to see the, evang- the gospel preached and to see our cities evangelized and to see more and more souls one for Christ. You know, this has been an amazing week. Uh, during this week, uh, the number of people who, are, who have been asking to study the Bible have been, been increasing. Uh, a number of brothers and sisters who have left the church have been, asked, have, have been asking us, can they come back? Can they be restored to our fellowship? I think God is moving in the hearts of people, and I want us to be aware of that. You know, as we are coming together and as we are wanting to move I want us to open our Bibles to Isaiah 58, and I want to talk about what it is that we want to do here. You know, the title of the message is Fast, Pray, Act. You know, there's time for us to humble ourselves uh, in fasting. There's time for us to call out to God in prayer, and there's times for us to act uh, on behalf of Jesus and for the good of the gospel. We must lead the world in this effort. Uh, of change. I, I don't want us to be going from the backside, letting the world pull us. We want to be the ones who are leading the change. The church has always been a city on a hill, a community of faith, and a diverse family of God. What does the Bible say? In Isaiah chapter 58, we're going to start off reading here in verse 1. This is what the Bible says. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise the, your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion, and to the descendants of Jacob, their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions. They seem eager for God to come near to them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed Yet, on the day of fasting, you do as you please. You exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, in the striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? 
Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To unloose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will appear quickly. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the oppression, of, with the yoke of oppression, and with the pointing finger and malicious talk, if you spend yourselves in the behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. You will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins, and you will raise up the aged old foundations. You will be called repair of the broken walls, restorers of streets of dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, the Lord's day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way, and not doing as you please or speaking out of words, then you will find the, your joy in the Lord. And I will triumph. I will cause you to ride and triumph on the heights of the land and to feast in the inheritance of their father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You know, I don't know what you think, but man, you read those words and they just drive your heart. They're inspiring what God wants to do among us. I love that. I love that we're not just a group of people who meet together and smile and say hello, but we have a purpose that is grounded in the eternal. He mentions the importance of understanding which side you're on. There are people who want to destroy the walls that God has built, but it's up to us to be those who build the walls that God has built that we continue to build up the very kingdom that we are a part of. We are not here to break anything down. We're not here to destroy one another. And yet we live in a world that does that so well. They know so well how to break people down. They know so well how to point the finger, how to have malicious talk. There are people who gather and they sing songs to God. And then as soon as the song ends, they turn and start hating people around them. They turn and they want to start doing violent things. They turn and they start wanting to act a fool. And they believe that God will hear their words. This passage is very clear. Is this the kind of prayer and fasting that is acceptable to the Lord? Surely not. The Bible says, but we who are the people of God, who reflect the very character and nature of God, well, when we fast, when we pray, God acts in powerful ways. The prayers of the saints are very efficacious for good works. You know, I want to talk about this passage, and I want to talk about how this connects to us. This passage is written as five stanzas of poems, five stanzas of poetry. The first stanza talks about what's happening currently. It's, it's a call out against sin. Literally, Isaiah says, man, look at the world. There's so much ungodliness going on in the world today. But yet he acknowledges there's lots of religious activity going on. So it kind of seems confusing, right? And because of that, there's a disappointment at the result of people's prayer and fasting. You know, I've heard people say stuff like, well, I'm not going to go to church, you know, because the church, you know, that, that's just white man's religion. And when I hear ignorant statements like that, I realize that ignorance is founded in the fact that there are people who do go to church, people who do their religious activity, but their character and their lives are just as ungodly as everybody else in the world. We're not here playing church. We're here living the life. 
There is an indictment against the world that Isaiah starts this poem out with. And that indictment is that we can see a specter of godliness, a smear of, of spirituality, right? Literally a veneer of holiness. But as soon as you dig a little bit deeper, you find all kind of ungodliness and wickedness lying, at, lying behind it. We need to call that out. We call that out by our lives. We call that out by our words. We are here to show the world what it should be like. The next stanza, he says, I want you to consider and I want you to answer some questions. He says, I want you to consider some things. And I love how he starts it off. He starts it off, he says, yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. Consider that. He says, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, striking each other with wicked fists. He says, their fasting, their prayer, their time of contrition to God wasn't a time about God as much as it was a time about selfishness. It ended in sinfulness and violence. And he goes on to say that you cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. This is really, really strong. Why am I saying this? Because lobbying and protesting may change some laws. But the fundamental character of our nation isn't about just the laws. It's about people following God and the lack of people fearing God. And he says, we can change rules, but if you can't get people to fear God, the nation's going to deteriorate anyway. And God asks three questions. He says, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves. Second question, is it only uh, for bowing one's head like a tree, like a reed lying on the sackcloth? In other words, I'm just doing the action. Third question, is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to God? It's literally like God is looking at their worship and saying, is that it? It's not acceptable. The third stanza, he says, it's time to correct the course. He says, fasting should prompt us to act against injustice. Fasting should lead us to meet physical needs, be it food or clothing or shelter. This will make your light shine with greater glory. God will hear your prayers coming from one like this. It's instructional on how we pray and on how we fast. The fourth stanza says, provide for the oppressed. It's God's response. What would God do? He says, when you provide for the oppressed and when you meet the needs of others, the Lord will guide satisfy and strengthen you. And you will be a cause of building and renewal. This is phenomenal. This is to me the meat of this. He says, when, when you fast like this and you pray like this and then you act like this, God himself will guide you. So many people say, I don't know what to do. But I tell you what, if you follow God, God will give you direction in which to follow. Some people say, I just don't feel satisfied. The Bible says, God will satisfy you when you live in this way. And there are others who feel weak, who feel tired, who feel like they can't go on any longer. And God will strengthen you when you, feel in when you live in this way. You will be a cause of building and renewal that the world will see. And it is glorious. Finally, in the last stanza, he ends off by saying this. Live righteously and honor God. Live righteously and honor God. And when you do that, you will find your joy in the Lord. The Lord will help you to dry it in triumph. The Lord will cause you to feast on an inheritance that your forefathers only dreamed about. I think this is inspiring. I believe that this is the challenge that God wants for each and every one of us. That we would be a people who could take up this mantle of prayer, of, of fasting, of prayer, and of action. And to that end, you know, what, is, what do we do? What, what's kind of our part here? And I say this not just for those of us who are here gathered at the, at the building, which is awesome to see all of you guys, and for those who are listening to us online, but what, are, what we decided to do was to, to select a day, to select this Friday, June 12th, to be a day where we as the Louisville Church of Christ 
will, will, will be in prayer and fasting for God to do incredible work among us. And I know that there are, there, are, there are some, and this is not all, and that's fine, but there are some who might feel a need to be able, who, who want to share their story, who might feel a need to, to want to educate themselves even more about this. And so one of the things that we want to do is this upcoming Saturday at 10 a.m., I just want to, uh, we're going to host online um, on a Zoom call just a, 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 a courageous conversation workshop. And this is, again, open to any of our members who maybe feel like on their hearts that that I, I just feel like I would love to be able to share some things from my heart. And, and our goal here is not only to have, not to have this kind of an open time, but for people to come and to have some specific one-on-one -on -one time uh, with another disciple, another brother, another sister, just to either be able to hear or to be able to share from your own experience so that we can better understand one another and that we can become a great, great family that I think God uh, will honor in a, in a powerful way. I just want to end by just saying, let us be disciples in action. Disciples in action are people who get involved. We're involved, not just in the, 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 the political thing of the day. No, we are people who are involved in the ministry of God, which is this ministry of praying, of fasting, of loosening the chains of injustice, of preaching the gospel for the salvation of many souls. Let us put our trust in God uh, to action this week. Let's do something with that. Let's make a choice. I know that there are those who feel like, man, maybe I can't really fast uh, all the way out. Well, you sacrifice from something, but let this Friday be a holy day that you set aside and you dedicate to God specifically for this purpose. I want to encourage all of you, join us. Join us this week. Join us this Friday on a day of, a day of prayer and fasting. We are a part of 25 churches working together to see God do something incredible. And I believe God will. I believe he will. Let us pray that God will change hearts. Let us pray that God will change our nation. Let us pray that God will change us for the better. And again, if you feel so called, please, you're, you're invited, and we're going to send the link across uh, for our courage time of co courageous conversation uh, this upcoming Saturday uh, after our time of, pr of prayer and fasting on Friday just to be able to talk and continue to build a, a, a ourselves together as a great family. Thank you so much again, guys, for being able to worship with us uh, this morning and being able to hear the Word of God through communion, celebrate uh, through song, and to be able to hear the Word of God preached. I pray that this will be something special for every single one of you. And to God be the glory. Amen. So, at this time, we are super excited to be able to honor our, our graduates. So I'm going to ask first off uh, that my wife uh, come on up. And then I'm also, I also want to ask our, uh, my wife and I, we actually oversee uh, our campus ministry. Uh, I also want uh, to invite uh, TJ and uh, J Jackie Clark. They actually lead and, and oversee our, our, our teen ministry. Uh, just to be able to have a few um, remarks. feel like I love this time of year um, just because I like to set goals and I like to see accomplishments and so um, definitely I know I'm probably not as, as excited as those who are high schoolers or especially the college students but I definitely my heart um, I've been there I'm so excited and very proud of you so we just want to take this time to really honor you for all the long nights, all the homeworks turned in, all the stresses that go along with just finishing a goal that you've started. So definitely give yourself an applause, pat yourself on the back. Uh, I know what each time that I graduated high school and college, I celebrated for a whole month. <laughs> 
till my parents had to say, okay, calm down, graduation is over. Um, but not to say that you need to do that, but I'm really, really encouraged. You do need to celebrate yourself and all that you've done um, and be very proud, amen. Hello, like Brian said, my wife and I, uh, we lead the team ministry, and I just wanted to share a quick scripture. In 1 Corinthians 13, 11, it says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man or woman, I put the ways of childhood behind me. And we are so insanely proud of all of you guys, uh, and we're super grateful, even for the time that we were able to spend with you all. We know that, uh, right, our time with you all in the team ministry was cut short. Um, but specifically to Josh, to Jonah, and to Dalton, uh, I'm very grateful for the time I was able to spend with the three of you these last few years. Uh, the conversations I was able to have with you at various points, the conversations I was able to have with your parents about you, um, and the men that I've been able to see you guys become. Uh, I've seen you all have moments of great honesty and great vulnerability, and my prayer for you all is simply this, uh, that as you move on to whatever is next in life for you guys, uh, you do it not as men of the world do, full of pride, uh, solitude, and self-centeredness, but in the ways that I've seen you guys behave these last couple of years. Uh, full of humility, full of love, genuinely vulnerable, and desiring to know God more and more every single day. Um, and for Jeannie and Sinclair, um, we will miss you all in the teens. Um, you both brought so much joy and laughter and energy and fun to the teen ministry. Um, and also just in my personal life. Um, I'm so excited to see what you all do in the future. Um, for Sinclair, I know that you're gonna do amazing in um, your design course that you're going to up in Cincinnati. Um, God has really blessed you with that talent that you have. So um, just go and use it to um, glorify him. Um, and for Jeannie, I can't wait to see where you end up and um, what road you take. You're a natural leader and we've had that conversation many times. So I pray that you just move forward and use um, that gift that you have to lead others to God. Um, and then I pray that both of you go forward and continue to just grow and to mature into strong, beautiful women and that you never forget to thank God for what he's giving you. Um, and then for all of the teens, we put baskets down here in front of um, each one of your all's signs that you have. We were originally going to do a movie night with you all, but because of social distancing, we changed it up a little bit and then just put some items in your basket so that you all can have movie nights with your families at home. But we're so proud of you all and love you dearly. So what we want to do here at this time uh, is just uh, be able to invite our teens to be able to come on up. Uh, again, I know this is a little bit different with uh, all of our, our social distancing, but uh, we want to invite uh, the teens to be able to come on up to uh, be able to get your baskets uh, and also the, these particular signs the church has provided for you. Uh, we want to, we're going to be using this uh, right afterwards for our graduation uh, parade that we're going to have. Uh, but we want to make this as something special for all of you guys just to celebrate you guys. Um, so if we would, could have one at a time because of social distancing, um, I can't see who I put first, sorry. Sinclair Thomas, can you please come and get yours? Thank you. take your sign because what we plan to do afterwards the graduates will go outside and you will put your sign um, on the lawn stand next to it for the parade so you'll be encouraged awesome next person uh, Jonah Traub Jeannie Pearson. <laughs> That's 
that's okay. <laughs> uh, next person, Joshua McBride. Well, we also like to call uh, our, our college graduates. Uh, we're going to uh, actually start off uh, with uh, Sierra Battle. Kiana Mitchell. We have Scott O'Donnell. So we got love for Scott. Uh, and then we have Sedekia uh, Peter. And then our, our last graduate, who's also not able to be here today, is uh, Jimmy Gardner. Woo! So just uh, one last announcement. Uh, we're going to be having our leaders meeting today. It's going to be at 1230. Uh, so for those who are here, for those who are online, uh, it's going to be at 1230, not at 12. Uh, we're going to be getting ready for uh, uh, probably photos and all that, but also uh, our graduation parade. Um, just to give some further directions with that. Um, I know that there will be other people who will be participating in the parade that are not in the auditorium. Um, for those of us who are and you want to participate in the parade is just getting in your car and putting a balloon. And we have balloons in the back if you want one. Um, please let the ushers know. They'll give you a balloon and tie it in your car. Um, and we're going to go around the block four times. <laughs> Uh, honk our horn, but only in front of the church building. Neighbors may not like it if we do it continuously. Um, just to celebrate our graduates who will be standing on the lawn um, to encourage them during this time of graduation, but also uh, social distancing. Um, so uh, we plan to leave out, because uh, I know people probably want to get pictures and all of that. We will leave out at 1140, but we will start to line up and get in our cars at 1120. Um, that way, the other people who are joining us can get the directions and get the balloons as well um, so that they can participate in the parade. If you have any further questions, please come and ask myself. Thank you, and to God be the glory. Amen. Awesome, guys. Amen.